Identifying hybrid lepomids or common sunfishes is no simple task, especially considering that theoretically all of the 13 recognized species of lepomids can hybridize with each other, creating a possible 78 combinations. And of those 13 species, individual species can vary greatly in appearance across regional populations, making hybrid IDs even more tricky. More often than not, you can't be 100% sure on a hybrid ID without DNA analyses. However, if you know your lepomid is just not looking like a pure specimen, I'll show you how to narrow down your possibilities to come up with the best educated guess possible. So I am Koa and this is KN Fishing Smarts where we fishers are always learning and sharing knowledge about fishing and fishes. And as I promised y'all, here is the video where I'm just gonna run you through the exact identification steps that I take when I encounter hybrid lepomids, steps that you can also use for your IDs. And so I was sorting through some old photos of common sunfishes I caught last fall for the guide, and I came across this specimen that I haven't cataloged yet. This is an obvious hybrid, so this is going to be our specimen under analysis. Before attempting to ID hybrids, you really need to have a firm grasp on the basic features of the species. And I already made a video on that of which I highly recommend you take a gander at when you have some time or you can just browse the free to view lepomid guide at koa.org forward slash sunfishes that has all the individual species pages and all relevant links that I mentioned in this video will be listed in the description below. Now I'm just going to follow the basic format of the six step guide I created for IDing common sunfishes. Step one. Learn the anatomical directionalities and basic sunfish features. So I believe every fisher should at least know the directionalities of dorsal, ventral, posterior, and anterior, as well as the basic parts of most fishes. So just four directionalities and some basic fish parts of which, if you're a fisher, you probably are already quite familiar with a lot of these terms. But this will allow you to understand what other fishers are talking about on a fish and help you better explain features of your fish to other people. And so I'm not going to get in depth here because I've already created videos and information on the website for you to view whenever you want. Step two, learn the basic features of species. Now this gets into what I mentioned earlier. You really can't even start to ID a hybrid lepomid if you don't yet know the basic features on the species within the genus. So even just learning two or three key features of each species in your area will help you out. Again, that content is already on video form here on the KNFS channel or on the website. Step three, get photographs of the fish. Getting proper photos is actually a crucial step and you can just use uh, your smartphone. The cameras on these are really good these days, so uh, just go for that. You'll need a good lateral shot of the fish, and that's the side of the fish. So make sure the fish is flat or parallel to the lens, and try to get the fins splayed out as much as possible. Uh, with hybrids, ray counts in the fins are important to examine, so we want to make sure the fins are spread out as much as possible. That pectoral fin is flat along the body and spread out. A close-up shot of the head will be helpful. Uh, for hybrids, always grab a shot of the gill rakers on the first gill arch. Uh, sometimes this feature is a make it or break it for an ID, like with red ear and bluegill hybrids. They're really hard to ID sometimes. Again, get shots of the gill rakers. And I already made a video on how to look at these, but basically you just want to look at the longest gill rakers that you can on that first gill arch. Uh, and any other photos of other angles of the fish may be helpful. And always check for a tooth patch on the tongue a feature typically only seen on the warmouth in this genus of fishes. Step four, listing all nearby lepomids. So now after you have your photos, it's very important that you create a list of all the nearby sunfishes in your area within the genus Lepimids. To do this, you have a few options. Firstly, you can go to the range maps that I've created for these species at co.org forward slash lepimids dash range dash maps. I've included all native and non-native ranges within North America for each species. Secondly, you can go out to inaturalist.org 
just go to explore, then type in Lepimis under species and under your location. I advise you put in your state or your county. You will be able to see all species in the area. I do suggest that once you target in on the body of water where you caught your fish, then you click redo search and map. You want to at least see species in a 25 mile to 40 kilometer range. But just because a species isn't popping up nearby, that doesn't necessarily mean it isn't in your water, so be mindful of that. You can also use other sources like Fish Brain. Uh, definitely check out your local government's uh, wildlife and fishing website. They usually have pretty vivid descriptions of uh, the fishes in most bodies of water. So the specimen that we are analyzing was caught in a lake in Northern Virginia. The confirmed species within this lake are bluegill, red ear sunfish, green sunfish, and warmouth. Species caught in nearby creeks and other lakes um, are pumpkin seed and redbreast sunfish. And a bit farther away, but still close by in the Potomac River, I've captured long ear sunfish. So that's seven possible parent species that we can examine. Step five, analyzing the fish. So here comes the fun part. We want to start figuring out what our fish is. And so that means we want to start eliminating possible parent species. So normally the mouth size and pectoral size are features that I want to examine first. The bluegill, red ear sunfish, and pumpkin seed are the only three species of common sunfishes that have very long and pointy pectoral fins and mouths that are very small. Where the maxilla, uh, that bone that goes farthest back on the upper jaw, that does not usually extend past the anterior edge of the eye. Our specimen has a large mouth. The maxilla aligns well behind the anterior portion of the pupil. And as we can see from the photo where I somehow blew the exposure out the wazoo, whoops, this is indeed a wide opening mouth for a lepimid of this size. Only two lepimids have a mouth and jaw this large, the green sunfish and warmouth, though the red breast may also show a fairly large mouth. Hybrids usually show intermediacy of traits from the parents, or traits that look like a semi-even mix of the two parent species. So if a bluegill, ready or pumpkin seed were a parent species, we would expect the mouth to be a bit smaller. We can't quite rule these species out yet, just because hybrids can be weird like that. But there is strong evidence as far as suggesting that they should go. Now let's look at the pectoral fin. Uh, this fin is very short and doesn't even extend to the posterior edge of the eye if it were bent forward. It's also quite roundly. Let's again remember that the pumpkin seed, red ear, and bluegill have very long and pointy pectoral fins that usually extend past the eye if they were bent forward. Considering how short and roundly that pectoral fin is, and how large that mouth is, and the fact I'm not seeing any typical traits of bluegill, red ear, or pumpkin seed on our specimen in question, we will eliminate these three species from contention. We are now left with possible parent species of green sunfish, warmouth, redbreast sunfish, and long ear sunfish. Now let's look at the gill rakers. The rakers on this fish are long and thin. The warmouth typically has very long and thin rakers, and the green sunfish has long and thin rakers. Redbreast rakers have been shown to be quite variable, but they are usually thick and long ear rakers are short and thick. The rakers on our specimen are long and thin and they don't look anything like a red breast or long ear gill rakers. Again, though intermediate characteristics are typical of hybrids, it doesn't always occur like that. Sometimes one parent's features are just very strongly expressed and not the other parents. So I don't think we can eliminate the red breast and long ear from the analysis quite yet but we would expect the rakers of our specimen to be somewhat shorter and at least thicker if a long ear was involved and most likely thicker if a red breast was involved. So the picture is getting clearer. So now let's look at the opercular flap, which is a good feature to always examine just on pure species IDs and also with hybrids. This specimen has an ear flap with diluted red and purple with anterior and posterior pale edging. The warmouth and green sunfish typically have that diluted red and purple color on the back of the ear flap. And long ear also show a, a diluted color within mostly a pale margin. And sometimes that color can be much more expressed. 
However, red breasts do not have any color on the posterior edge of the ear flap. Also, let's look at the length of this ear flap. It's not too large, and definitely a bit oddly pointed, which is just more suggestive that it's a hybrid. Redbreast and Longear have the two longest ear flaps of all the Lepimids, and these flaps are typically longer on males. And although our specimen looks full of eggs, if we look at the tiny urogenital opening of our specimen, which is just posterior to the anus, we can be pretty sure this is a male. If it were a female plump with eggs, that urogenital opening would be much larger and swollen. It would kind of look like a donut. This is just a well-fed male. So if there were long ear and red breast in this fish, we would really expect a slightly longer ear flap. So I'm almost confident enough to now eliminate the long ear sunfish and red breast sunfish just from looking at the gill rakers and of course the length and coloration on that ear flap. But let's also look at the upper lip. Typically long ear and red breast will have a blue streak across the entire upper lip. On green sunfish, this bluish iridescence on the lip is short and normally it's limited only to a small portion on the lateral sides and warmouth do not have that blue streak. Our specimen shows only a faint bit of blue streaking. It's just like a green sunfish's but much more diluted. So with that and the fact I'm not seeing any other traits of long ear and red breast on this specimen, I'm going to eliminate these two species. So we believe our apparent species are the green sunfish and warmouth. Let's examine more reasons to support our conclusion. Uh, the meristics on this fish are as follows. There are three anal spines, nine anal rays, ten dorsal spines, nine dorsal rays, and thirteen pectoral rays on that left pectoral fin. These counts fall within the ranges of the green sunfish and warmouth, especially with the nine anal rays and nine dorsal rays where those counts are usually one or two higher on the other lepimids around here. So this specimen did not have a tooth patch on the tongue. Uh, typically only warmouth have a well-developed tooth patch on the tongue, but it is actually quite common that when one species hybridizes with a warmouth, that F1 uh, generation, those, those specimens are not going to have a tooth patch on the tongue like a warmouth does. Uh, the white and orange along the median fins is a common green sunfish feature and usually persists through on the hybrids. The dark blotching in the median fins is a trait of the warmouth, and warmouth usually have dark lines radiating from the eyes, and we can see the dark lines from our specimen are there, but kind of mashed together. And these dark mashed lines with that blue streaking along the head very much so look like intermediacy of pattern between the warmouth and green. And the lateral pattern along the body also appears like good intermediacy with that pale blue spotting and the lattice network of blue on that dark brown top. So without doing a DNA analysis, I am as certain as certain can be that we are dealing with a war green. And I'm kind of just giving it that name. That is a green sunfish parent, a war mouth parent. The F1 generation is the war green. Okay, subscribe to join the KNFS fishing community here on our lovely YouTube channel. Fish responsibly and uh, good luck. And step six is just getting a second opinion on your ID if you want. And the full instructions for that are on the sunfish guide at koa.org forward slash sunfishes.